Cool. Check. Great. All right, everybody. How you doing? Um, my name's Troy Track Select. These are the select few sessions. And uh, if you're watching, you are one of the select few. So we've got Josh Gillespie here. I'm just going to go ahead and let him get started. Everybody give it up. Thank you so much. Thank you, Troy. It is an honor to, to be able to kind of kick off the, the series here at uh, Luger Plaza. Special thanks to the Indy Cultural Trail. Um, and huge shout out to Troy and Select Few Sessions for the invitation. So, this first song is a song called Maybe It's Time. <laughs> Bush is always burning, but when we're on our screens, the world is all in chaos. We're caught in the between. We say we want to change now, we don't know what that means. The vision is lost, they fall deeper and refuse to count all the cost. Maybe it's time, time for us to see, open our hearts to the true change we need. Maybe it's now, if only we knew how, how to make sense of overflow of sound maybe it's time for the refugee and orphan who seek a better life For the hungry and the thirsty who struggle to get by. For the people on the edges who are never in the light. Could we look at them? Could we fight the fear and let go of what's inside? Maybe it's time, time for us to see. Open our hearts to the true change we need. Maybe it's now, if only we knew how, how to make sense of the overflow of sound. Maybe it's time. Pride has made us blind. Act like we know, but the show can go on. If we turn our eyes away from what's within, the measure is outside where true change begins. Maybe it's time, time for us to see. Open our hearts to the true change we need. Maybe it's now, God show us how, how to bring change to the chaos we found. Maybe it's time.
Thank you. Thank you. So that was the debut single from my debut album, Make Something Happen Here. Uh, normally, I, if I'm playing the electric, I'm playing with the full band. But I wanted to try something different tonight and wanted to break out the electric for a couple of songs for you guys tonight. The rest will be on acoustic, but um, yeah. So this next one uh, was also on my first album. It's called Souvenirs of War. <laughs> You were sent to speak for them An apostle for the people Your moment of glory has come It's over before it's begun In the God you will always be true To the precious of you your souvenirs of war. No one wins in your spoken view. You question how your view, your pride knows no sense. You can say one more thing. The lot was cast against. Will you cry? the few, your souvenirs of war. No one wins in your spoken view. You're careful how you view. Your pride knows no sense. Brutal will, a poison pill, a bloody win. Where to begin? the cost when all is lost but everything is lost here is the lie you will always be true to the precious of few your souvenirs of war no one wins in your spoken view you question how your view your pride knows the sense. Here is a lie, you will always be true to the precious of you, your souvenirs of war. No one wins in your spoken view. You question how your view, your pride knows the sense. Apostle for the people. Moment of glory has come. It's over before it's begun. Thank you. So I'm a switch it up a bit. I'm going to go acoustic and kind of bring it down just a bit for a little bit. So this is a song that I'm actually kind of proud of. Um, it's a song that uh, oh, that uh, the tune itself is 16 years old, actually older than that. But I didn't actually have lyrics for it until um, 
just a couple of years ago. A lot of these songs are kind of come out of the pandemic. Um, so that's just where a lot of us were. So um, this, this next song is called Another Story. I like to say that it's about gaslighting. Or is it? I'll let you decide. Or will I? <laughs> I don't know. What we have now, this is real. What you fear are lies in disguise. I can't help you, but just trust me. A subtle tilt of the truth. Do you feel the slow dose of doubt? drip in your mind it's just that I am right and we all have a story to tell is it real or a fantasy hard to tell but I think you saw and you heard sometimes the lines are so blurred do you feel the slow dose of doubt it's not that you're wrong it's just that I am right and a story to tell Can't find your feet Up is down But it's only just begun One more chance It's not that bad The change is sure to come Everyone gets a slow dose of doubt, a drip in the mind. The story is in pieces, no one knows, but it's fine. One drop at a time. Write your heart. It's just the truth on a tilt, just another story to tell. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, this next one's called Remains of Time. It's actually a song that was, the lyrics were written by my, my producer and cousin. Um, it's a conversation that he had with his daughter, who was about five at the time. And her question is, what's time made of? And now with the JWST telescope, we're actually finding out uh, to a certain degree. But this song doesn't address that. It's, it's much more fatherly. <laughs> You ask me what time is made of. I take my head and I don't know. 
science may have all the answers, but no way to make the pace slow down. But you made me wonder what time is made of. You told me what time is made of sealed your gaze and looked away you said time is made of waiting and that's all that you would say you would say Broken glass over which I crawl Or is it A feather bed There to break my fall There to break my fall In my mind, an answer's for me. Time is made of precious stones. A candlelight that flickers out. Memory is all that's left for us. Now it's all that I have left. Memories are the remains of time. Remains of time. Remains of Thank you. Thank you. So I'm currently in the studio working on my next album. It is called Ghost Stories. And uh, it is an album that kind of deals with the conflict of faith and depression and so on and so forth and all the rigmarole that is wrapped up in that. And this is the title track called Ghost Stories. Never settled, never comfortable Just a man seeing ghosts The body may be gone But the stories must live on Just ghostly souls Waiting for the moment to arrive Sure I carry some ghosts with me, visions and sense 
of a former life, but I am not like that other guy. We share nothing but memories. I felt the ghost of the fool I was there in the echo chambers as these walls dissolve away. Out of the sofa, bring me home from in the alone, like the string with these crooked lines. Will you come? You're only acid as your secrets inside. Given what's the truth, what can I divine? My best times have been the worst of all time. Trials and jubilations, only he can really divide. I felt the ghost of the fool I was there in the echo chambers as these walls dissolve away. Righteous strength with these crooked lines. Revision takes advantage of hindsight's blurry lens. Questioning reality and all what could have been. I battle with the Holy Ghost, unlaid by what I see. Cast down by what is lost, but you have always been with me. Of the slow fire, bring me home from in the alone. Like the strength with these crooked lines, till you come, will it be on time? I've seen your ghost walk on the water. Knowing better till he's gone, till he's gone, till he's gone. All right. So this is my last one. This is actually going to be my upcoming single. Released maybe next month. I don't know. We'll see. Sometimes recording songs takes a little bit longer than, than what you'd like. And so this song is a song about unrequited love, and it's a happy song. Well, the tune is happy. Never had left a piece of my heart For what it's worth It was playing its part For half a second I lived in your reality Waiting for the hour to come But time is full of brevity I walked this house in the dark But in these halls I'll find my song Read us under the ancient light Not knowing if we're over Before it even started The poor old man, it was just too hard I let my afflicted heart 
play its part. With you, I don't have to be like Jesus. The drama bring the beauty. The facts distort the story. The fires were burning and you fanned the flame. You were an awesomeness. Posing as a fireman I feel I'm flying in the dark But in the skies I'll find my song We dance under the ancient light Not knowing it for over Before it even started The poem Let my afflicted heart play its part. For you I wait in the silence, wondering why I'm still here. I've heard that destinations matter, but like this journey set before me, I am whole. Swimming in the dark But in these lanes I'll find my song We that's under the ancient light Not knowing it for over Before it even started The poor lament was just too hard I let my afflicted heart play its part. Oh. 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 Thank you very much. I'll bring back up Troy. All right, thanks a lot, Josh. Uh, everybody give me like five or 10 minutes so I can reset and we'll get the interview started. Appreciate it. Looks like there's a spot for the chairs. Yeah, yeah that's okay, perfect. Cool. All right. cool. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, everybody, thanks for coming to the show. Let's clap for Josh just one more time. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. So yeah, here we are. Select you session. I am Troy Track Select, and we're at the Luger Plaza, where we'll be for like five months. So I'm gonna get real comfortable. Woo! I'm gonna go ahead and change my address, <laughs> and I'll live out here amongst the stars for a little while. Um, but yeah, Luger Plaza kind of built in addition to the Indianapolis Cultural Trail with a couple other main points in Fountain Square and on the canal, uh, all kind of in honor of Richard G. Luger, an old mayor and senator for many years of Indiana and mayor of Indianapolis. So shout out to him. He's got all this built after him. I don't have anything built after me, so. Uh, but okay. you're, you're doing the show on his plaza, so. I am, so I don't know, maybe, maybe you know, it's an honor for him that I'm performing. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's I'm absolutely hosting. an honor for him. Uh, okay, let's see, Josh. So we're just going to pretty much get right into it. I don't think I'm going right. to have a big to do. Uh, so I, one of my first questions is always, how did you get into playing music at all? Sure. Well, uh, I come from a musical family. Mm -hmm. um, my, my parents both played. My, my dad actually um, grew up. And my, my grandfather was a traveling evangelist in the 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And so when they would uh, go from church to church, 
but they would also lead the music there. And my uh, the family actually started leading the music. So my dad was on organ or piano. Uh, my uncle would play violin, I think. And my grandpa and grandma would, would sing. Mm-hmm. And that just kind of, that kind of history of music kind of carried through into the family. Uh, my brother plays drums, has his own drum making company mm-hmm. uh, in, in Georgia. And um, so I've been playing music pretty much my entire life, but I've really only been like having a pursuit of music here in the last few years. Yeah. yeah you've got a real daddy saying bass kind of thing going on. So yes. Old Johnny Cash <laughs> reference. Yes. Not too many are going to get that one, but I got it. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm really glad <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Uh, so then are you, is your family from Indiana or? Yes. Okay. Yes. We are, uh, uh, oddly enough, I'm the only one who's still here. Mm -hmm. Um, the rest of my family has kind of moved out to different locations across the country. Um, but I'm still here. I love Indiana. It's always been home. It will always be home. Um, and I, I got married out in DC. I met my wife out there. I was only out there for a couple of years, Mm -hmm. uh, but I met her out there, brought her back here. And she was a military brat. Okay. And so she was used to moving. Yeah. And so I brought her to a place where she's just gonna just gonna have to learn how to settle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, we we've moved quite a few times uh, within, within Indiana. central Indiana, mm-hmm. but uh, we've pretty much stayed around Indianapolis. Um, we I, Indianapolis has always been very centric to to basically what I call home. Yeah. Uh, so. I guess, you know, obviously you have lots of music going on in your life. Do you have any other outlets that you, you know, do something creative? Like, I don't know, some people make clothes, some people film (laughs) movies, I don't know. Well, my job allows me to, has allowed me to really kind of explore the space of, um, of digital video production. Yes. Um, And that's not something that I was really into or have any particular formal training. Mm -hmm. Uh, doing that, but um, it's something that I've learned to do, and I really, really enjoy it. Kind of, it gets into that creative space that um, is different than what I would be doing if it was, you know, music. Mm-hmm. You know, so it kind of engages a different part of that creativity uh, that I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you don't mind, because we do something very similar. Yes. Um, yes. So I'd like to get into that just a little bit. What is it? that you do that's <laughs> S- very similar, similar to this. But I would s- no, I, 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 first of all, I'd like to point out that we are very different in what we do, but uh, there, are, there are definitely some similarities. And uh, a huge shout out to Troy for what he does to engage the music community here in Indianapolis. Um, and I mean, you're fairly new to the, to the area. I am. And so to really fully engage yourself like this is awesome. Thank so I, I thank you for, for doing select few sessions in your partnership with the Indie Cultural Trail. That is awesome. Um, what The other thing that I do, uh, aside from, and this is where the, the digital video creation has kind of helped in, in on uh, the other thing that I do. I have a podcast called Voices of Indie. Mm-hmm. And it also engages the uh, music community as well as the art and theater communities. Um, primarily, we've been doing music this year. Uh, a- engaging in the, in the music area, and we, um, I have a weekly podcast where I have someone from the music community on. Uh, they perform a couple of songs, not nearly a full set, like you know, almost a near, you know, a half hour set. I only let them do a couple songs, mm-hmm. just two. Um, but uh, it's it's still it's engaging the community here in Indianapolis, talking to them, getting to know them as, as individuals and as artists. Um, and knowing that that we have something similar like that, you know, it's 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 good to partner like this. Mm-hmm. And I hope to reciprocate to have you on my podcast so that we can talk about select few sessions and the work that you've been doing. Um, because that's this kind of stuff is important. This kind of stuff is this engagement is important. And we need more than one voice out there doing doing what we're doing. And so it's good to have a partner like Troy out there doing this kind of work. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's it's funny because, you know, Voices of Indy is kind of the reason that we met at all and yep. are interacting. 
Uh, because when I was coming up with the concept for this show and had come up with it but just hadn't enacted it, I saw Voices of Indie kind of pop up on my Instagram feed, and I was like, oh, that's crazy. There's this other <laughs> thing out there. Yeah. Um, but like, speaking of that, you know, the, the intro to the show is the first song off of this album. Yep, right? it is. Yep. Yeah. I, I, uh, shame, shameless plug for my <laughs> own music on my own podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's but I don't ever say I don't ever say what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so the the first track is it it's uh is it maybe it's time maybe it's time mm-hmm. yes so uh, that kind of seems to be uh, a sort of theme on your album because the name is make something happen here Correct. right so why why that name why did you go with that so I didn't want uh I, I took a completely different. Uh, perspective with my first album than I did with my second album. So my second album is called Ghost Stories, and it the the title track is like you know there is a title track. There is no title track with the first album because mm-hmm. um, I thought it was gonna be cheesy to have the first song be the name of the album. I was like, that's what people who don't take themselves seriously <laughs> as musicians do. They you know their their hope for getting somehow into the mainstream is to make that first song be the title track. Mm. So I was like, I'm not gonna do that. So I had a completely different title for my album, which I can't even remember anymore. Mm-hmm. But one day I was um, doing my morning run, and I run past this piece. I don't know if it's street art or, or what it what it is, but it's outside of my kid's school. And someone had put in marker on the lamppost, make something happen here. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, that's what my album is about. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's the – I'm, I'm going to really geek out for you guys, I, you know, and say that my album is kind of like a college term paper in that there is a thesis, a thesis statement that's maybe it's time. There's an argument. There's a conclusion. Um, and the, the title of the paper is Make Something Happen Here. But, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a call to action not just to me but to, you know – a community-wide mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, and I very much picked up on a lot of the, uh, there seemed to be a theme going on throughout the album, so I guess I guess I'll just ask the question, mm-hmm. what would you say the theme of this album is? Well, um, so I've, I've tried to see how long I could avoid it uh, up until now. Oh, just, uh, just outright saying it? But I'll outright say it. Mm-hmm. So it is what I consider my political deconstruction album. Mm-hmm. And I have I have a background in politics. I've worked in politics the vast majority of my life. Um, and low about between the 2014 to 2016 time frame was when I really started feeling a shift. Mm-hmm. And what I was thinking, what I was seeing, and how what I was hearing wasn't matching up with what I believe. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there was direct conflict. And um, I felt like it wasn't my beliefs that had changed. It was everything else that had changed. Mm -hmm. And if I'm being completely honest, I started feeling like, you know, I had, because I'd been in communications in, in, in politics, um, I felt like I had actually, it, it's, it, my album is almost uh, an album of repentance as well, because I feel like I've been leading people down the wrong path for so long, because I had bought in, you know, full line and sinker to the, the party politic. Yeah. And that was just wholly deconstructed and um, that's for the first time I had written tunes for a long time you know I had gobs of tunes but I never had songs Mm -hmm. I never had lyrics yeah those were always the hardest things I mean even when I write now I write a I write a tune first and it was like all of a sudden this album was a breakthrough and I was able to find my voice, you know, especially as someone who had been in communications, I was using someone else's voice, but now I was able to find my own voice. Right. Well, okay, so we'll slide into one of my other questions then, which was 
I guess I want to talk about Slave to the Party. Go right ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And it was funny because, you know, the first time I was listening to it, I know that a lot of your influences kind of come from the 80s and the 90s mm -hmm. and maybe even a little bit of the aughts. And so it, it kind of gave me that feel of a, a 2000 sort ah, of good, good. Um, feel. And it was just funny knowing that that's, you know, where a lot of your the stuff that you like comes from. I'm 45. I mean, yeah, my, my songs are going to sound a little dated. That's the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I was listening to it, and I remember the you know seeing it. And at first, it's got this kind of veil of it's a song about a party. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was really funny because one of the first things that we talked about, you were like, you know, I'm a family man. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they've got me out here doing all this work and stuff. And uh, so I wanted to be able to ask, like, oh, like, what was Josh like in the party scene? That'd be a lot of <laughs> fun. But then as I listen to it, you go into more detail and I listen closer and you seem to be talking about uh, just being very much tied to and chained to different political parties. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that's ultimately what it's about. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you pick on, on first that it is it's supposed to feel like a party. Yes. Um, that first line is got past the rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and I mean, you got past the rope, dive right in, wanton desire. You know, it's just like that's that's the party, right? <laughs> um, but at the same time, in politics, that's it's the same thing. It's absolutely the same thing. You're always fighting to get to the next level. Um, you know, from if if you are that mentally and emotionally and psychologically invested into something like that it is it is exactly the same i mean you are striving to get someplace where um you want to think that you will matter and ultimately at the end of the day the vast majority of us will get spat out and not even cared about because you know there's always someone looking to replace you yeah that's daily life. Corporate it is daily life. life. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's that's that was um, that was actually the fastest song that I wrote. That is the most upbeat song on the album. Well, not just. Sure. I mean, like in terms of like timing. Yeah, too. but like, even that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it is. It is. It is one of the fat fastest fastest songs on the album, mm -hmm. but it is also like when I wrote it, it was the one that came to me the quickest. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, I guess kind of going along that sort of same theme, there seems to be this uh, theme of deceit that's going through a lot of your songs on this album. So mm -hmm. like on another story, I mean, you even start off and said during your playing yeah. set that it was a song about gaslighting, but um, you say like a tilt of the truth, um, you think you saw and heard. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that is comes from Again, my background in communications mm -hmm. and in politics and knowing how to to perceive the truth. And I remember being in meetings on, you know, when writing a press release or writing or trying to come up with a way to address a particular issue, being like, okay, this is how we want to frame this. Yeah. And so how you want to frame it is how you want people to believe it. So you're already in the process of trying to gaslight people if you're just not outright saying what's going on yeah um and so th a lot of that a lot of that came from personal experience um and again it's that's not what i was thinking i was doing at the time you know i was thinking i was just doing a job and i knew that i was good at it and that i enjoyed it and that um that i i knew how to manipulate a message um, but it wasn't just that. I mean, you know, uh, I had my wife look over this, this song particularly, uh, because, um, she had had, she had been in a previous situation, uh, where she had been gaslit. And so I was like, not from a political perspective, but, you know, from a relational perspective. And I was like, I want your take on this. Am I getting this right? Um, you know, and 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 so she had she had a lot of influence on that particular song, and honestly, it's also influenced by what you see in the news, yeah. and I mean a lot of the partisanship within within the news. <laughs> so that's that's kind of where that comes from. Yeah, I mean that that makes a lot of sense, especially 
with your background mm -hmm. um, that you would be thinking about and writing a lot of stuff. Also, I'm glad that you said you were really proud of it because it's another story is probably my favorite. Really, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I I really do enjoy that song. I think that In I fact think it's the groove that I like a lot. Well, yeah. oddly enough, it's the only song that right now has a sequel. Oh, okay. Um, That's always fun. I miss un sequels. Unintentionally, it has a sequel. Um, and it's one that I, I wrote recently called Wages of Spin. Oh, okay. There you and go. another story was originally called Wages of Spin. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So uh, I, I junked the title when I wrote another story, and um, but I kept it because I was like, I feel like this is useful for something. Sure, sure. So I, I used it for, for an, a new song, which is it's either a sequel or a prequel. I'm not entirely sure uh, to another story, but it definitely ties into another story. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, hey, I'm happy to see it. I think I was literally just talking not too long about I miss sequels to songs. I think <laughs> it's a fun thing. So I'm glad we get to see one around here. Yeah. Well, it's it's not called you know another story part two. Well, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> It's, but it is, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's at, at the very least a sister song to another story. Yes. Uh, now you also do make some other choices on the album where like you have uh, two songs that are strictly instrumental. Yes. Um, so what made you go in that direction? It's very rare that I see people do that. Sure. Well, um, India Blue, which is the first instrumental, was a song that I wrote um, that I, always wanted to record but never felt like it actually ha was going to have words mm -hmm. and so when i was putting the track list to this album together it's an it's a song that felt like an intermission if i'm being honest because mm -hmm. it's basically smack dab in the middle of the album um and if it was on vinyl it would be the end of side one so yeah. that when you S Slave to the Party kicks off side two, so that if you were listening on vinyl, you turn the, t you know, you turn the record over, or you, you flip the tape over, and then you just get a punch in the face with Slave to the Party. Yeah. Um, I mean that was intentional mm -hmm. when I put the set list together. And the second uh, instrumental called Pinocha is what I call, um, if it, that's the part of the the term paper that is me. Uh, that I feel is like my conclusion. Like, it, it, it's me leading into the conclusion. So it, it's me making my final statement. Mm -hmm. And it's odd that I use an instrumental to make my final statement, but for there, I'm trying to evoke a feeling and a sound of, of you know, like, like you know, the growing pangs of, of a changing earth, kind of, kind of uh, how it goes. Um, Pinocha is actually one of the seven supercontinents. Yes. And right. so I chose, I didn't want to go with Pangea because I thought that was too obvious. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to find a supercontinent that no one really knew about. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Pinocha, that's it. And so the, the song is meant to evoke that kind of just change and morphing into something new and better. Yes. Yeah. I had to research that because I was like, well, what does Pinocha mean? <laughs> I'm glad that you did. That's fun. And then I was like, oh, it's a, it's, and I was like, it's like Pangea. It's a super. Yeah, it's a super continent. It was actually one of the smallest supercontinents, but. Still, it's a supercontinent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we don't have any of them now. We don't. <laughs> so we don't. Um, interesting. Okay, well then, here's another decision I thought was something that kind of came from that early 2000s esque time. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, I'm more familiar with R&B albums doing it, but I'm sh positive that some country albums also did it, where they'd have like a gospel song towards the end, or it might even mm. be uh, the last song on there. Yeah. You might even have two. Well, so I have, there's a song called Seasons. Yes. Um, which was the last song that was actually written for the album. And, and would you call it a gospel song? Because you might not. I don't, mm -hmm. but I can see where you're coming from. And there is definitely a, uh, a, an emotional and sort of religious tie-in to that song. Uh, more so it's, it's more of a cry out because that was, you know, Again, we're still at the height of the pandemic. There is still, you know, we're still kind of in quarantine. And some of the lines from that song actually came from um, experiences that I heard on the news. Yeah. So there's a line uh, in there. Um, I can't remember it exactly. I, I'm terrible with lyrics. 
<laughs> and so I, I can't remember my – you'll have people on here who are able to cite their lyrics like that. I can't do that. Yeah. But there's a line that basically uh, is talking about your heart screaming. Mm -hmm. And that came from um, in Japan during the pandemic when they would have people visiting <laughs> parks, <laughs> amusement parks. Mm -hmm. They said, please scream within your heart. That was oh that was yeah yeah I got you scream within your yeah that was actually on the signage, mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't care how, but I'm going to use that because that is poetic, um, and I felt like th only they could only the Japanese could come up with something that poetic yeah. in terms of an amusement ride, you know, um, and uh, there was there was another line in there about um, not being able to grasp something. And that was basically where uh, a story that I saw about uh, um, a daughter and her mother. Mother was in the nursing home, and it was at that time when they would have that wall between the the people in the nursing home and the people who were visiting. Um, and it's like she felt like she could touch, but she couldn't. Like you know, it was like she was unable unable to grasp. So. Um, that's where that comes from. Is it still going? Yeah. Okay. And then you're probably also alluding to Sing, to Sing for the Day. Is um, Yeah, yes, yes. So Pinocchio leads into Sing for the Day, mm -hmm. uh, also intentional. Um, and that that is truly the conclusion, a conclusion statement, is that um, it's, it's looking for hope. It's a song of hope, and that there is – with all the crap that's going on, even if it was during the pandemic, you know, because there are other aspects of this song, uh, of this album that, that take from what was going on during the pandemic because we had a lot of police brutality going on during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the song Wake Up Dead Man is about police brutality. Yes. Is, is, is kind of like my, uh, I don't want to say my take. I feel like I... <laughs> I'm not in a position to have a take, mm -hmm. um, but it is it is um, me writing about what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. and um, and so you get by the time you get to sing for the day, it's just like you've gone through this this trudge, this 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 um, experience of songs of of, of of like you said, like you know disorientation in their own way um, at the end finding some sort of hope yes that's the goal hmm. yeah glad a statement I mean I thoroughly enjoy the album like I said I definitely thank you felt a, th a theme going there was a on theme. throughout yes, it there was a theme so I'm glad that you said it was kind of like your your term paper your uh, your thesis yeah. and you <laughs> broke it all the way down um, it's probably the worst way to describe an album. Like, if you want someone to buy your album <laughs> or listen to it, hey, listen to this term paper. <laughs> uh, but that's honest. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be completely honest. That's what I was thinking of when I was writing it. It's like, this is how this – it's how it felt yes. when I was writing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I always like to ask this question. So does anyone in the audience have a question they want to ask before we close things out? <laughs> so the question was, do my kids yeah. think I'm a rad dad? Um, I am currently a father of three teenagers and two elementary school age. And so I am, at least two of them think I'm a rad I was dad. I say, you got two out of five. I got two out of sure. five down. Yeah. Uh, the other three, I am beyond the rad dad uh, state of, of time. So Yeah. I mean. But thank you for asking. Every... Rock star is a, a dad to their kids, and their kids are usually pretty over it. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> um, but two out of five is pretty good. Two, for now, yes. For, for now. For now. My 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 now ten year old. So she's a. No, no, please. She's. I'm not gonna age her. She's nine. <laughs> <laughs> but she's still. She's very much influenced by her fourteen year old sister. Mm. So oh, she kind somebody. of acts like a preteen at times, but she's still a sweetheart. So. There you go. They'll flip back. They It'll will. Just be they a will. Couple more years. They'll be like, wow, my dad was making albums at a point. That's I cool. was. Yeah. That's uh, hopefully. Th and I mean, in all honesty, it's like when I was making this, I wanted to be able to point them to something that I did that I felt was worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I never thought I'd get past one, 
but I'm already working on a second one, and I've essentially written a third. There you are. Um, and I am looking forward to getting both of those done. Yeah. Oh, well, do you have uh, kind of a – I know you said you had a single that may come out next month. Yes. But do you have any idea of when the uh, second album, Ghost Stories, is I'm coming? hoping it comes out later this year. Okay. Um, so like initially, fall, I was kind of think. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I was initially I was probably thinking around summertime, but mm-hmm. just the way that things have kind of gone during the courting process, it's kind of, you know, sometimes things can be hit and miss. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's probably looking like it's going to come out towards the end of the year, is my is my guess. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I guess before we leave, go ahead and shout out your socials and then. Yeah. We'll get yeah. Here. So. Uh, oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Go for it. Mm-hmm. What doing music or the uh, or the album? Oh, music in general. So she asked, "What's the end goal?" What's the end goal? Gosh, the the end goal. So there is a singer songwriter that I'm a big fan of, and actually. I can say that I know him. He let me open for him uh, a couple months ago when he was doing a house show. Um, so, uh, and if if my end goal was to be able just to do house shows and make a living off of music, you know, have a dedicated fan base, I don't need to play Banker's Life or what what's it called now? Game Gamebridge. Bridge, yeah. Gamebridge. 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 Yeah. I don't need to be playing Gamebridge. I don't need to be playing Lucas Oil. If I got the hi-fi, that would be, I, that'd be cool. so rad. Yeah. I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah. That I think that would – that's that's bucket list right there, if I could play the hi-fi. Um, but honestly, it's it's enough that – I just want to be able to support my family, you know. Um, but, you know, that's that's a long trudge. <laughs> so you got to have the side hustle. Yeah. Or the music is the side hustle while you have the regular. <laughs> so – Shout out to Hi Fi. Yes, yeah, sh- definitely. You know, shout out to the Hi Fi. Shout out to Hi Fi. Well, and and all the venues in Fountain Square. My goodness, I would love to play all the venues in Fountain Square. Hint, hint. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, anyway. uh, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Everybody, clap one more time for Josh Gillespie. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. And I guess we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye.